Experiments with extracts. A lot of people have asked us, hey, have you ever tried this extract or that extract? Or have you ever made your own extracts? And we always said, well, we don't really buy the commercial ones just because we like to do things ourselves or use something that's, you know, homemade, that kind of thing, something more simple. And I never really got into extracts as a rule. And then we made a couple of meads that really probably could have benefited from them. One of them being the peanut butter banana mead and another one was a chocolate thing along the way. Chocolate cherry mead. Yeah. Which I both happened to find and bring out for today. Yeah. But here's what I did. Several months ago, I th think there's dates on here. Yeah, December 13th of 2021. It is now April 19th of 2022. So this is January, February, March, April. four months, four full months. These extracts have been sitting on their substrates to see what happens. And we thought, okay, we need to test them to find out if they're any good. I've been smelling them along the way and they smell amazing. We made a peanut butter and a chocolate, okay? Those are the first two extracts. We'll get into how to make it later, don't worry. But for now, let's just see, did they work? Because what's the point in learning to make it if it sucks, right? I mean, if they're no good, you don't really wanna do it. So we have here a couple of beverages. Only two glasses though. Because we only have two of this size glass. Oh, let me just go get another glass, I'll be right back. So now we magically have three glasses. Yay, Brian. We're gonna start off with our dry mead because that is a more neutral beverage and it's really going to let the extract flavor shine through. And we know that we just tasted it recently and it's pretty good. So um, yeah, it works. Now, when you're doing these kind of things, it's usually really important to take notes on how much you're putting in. I'm not doing that today, but I am putting a decent pour in there because as you go to smaller volumes and start testing, it gets really increasingly difficult to measure things and be accurate. Now, extreme accuracy is not what we're after today. We wanna to know, did it work? Do these things work at all? Um, we do have one little conundrum though. We have a chocolate extract and a peanut butter extract. Peanut butter. So we're just gonna do peanut butter in this one? Yeah. Okay, we're doing peanut butter in the, in the traditional bead. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. We looked for an eyedropper, we didn't have one. We do have one. I just don't know where it is right now. Totally smells like peanut butter. And I'm just gonna pull out like a spoonful. Try not to get any of the substrate in there. I'm guessing that's probably like four drops. See? Five drops, six. Damn much. It's, it's damn much, yeah. It's like nine drops, whatever. I'm just gonna leave this open. Need something to stir it with. If you're thinking this just seems very unscientific and very imprecise, you're right. Because all we're doing is testing a theory. Are the extracts even usable? Is it something we even care to reproduce and try again? This is just a proof of concept, if you will. It does add a little bit to the smell. Not much, there wasn't much in there. Because that's the other thing is how strong are these? We don't know, Does it? do, do we need a lot of it? to really get the flavor. Need more than I put in, that's for sure. I don't taste it at all. I get a little bit on the back end, but I think mostly it's because I know it's there. I'm gonna do a whole spoon. If my voice sounds a little off today, I'm having an allergy issue, so I just coughed my lungs out a little while ago, so it might be a little scruffly. That's what's, what's going on. That's why she's having trouble breathing. No more lungs to cough. <laughs> you know, breathing is difficult now. Still not really tasting it. And that's mildly concerning when you can't taste it in there. Oh, you taste it? I taste it. I definitely got peanut without having to search for it that time. I think if you use more, it'll be more even more pronounced. But um, the first sip, I was like, is there a peanut? Maybe might be something. Now I'm like, I'm really oh yeah, it's peanut. Because, you know, see, we're at the point where how much we add is going to determine the next time we make one of these, how much we use to make it, how much substrate, how much of the uh, extract liquid. 
So I have like two and a half full spoons in here now, which is a significant amount for a small glass like this, making me really think if I was to use this in say a gallon, I need more than that jar, but right off the bat. I'm just now starting to get a hint of peanut. Really not that strong. I just really don't get much peanut from it. Okay, now that we only have like a sip left, let me add another spoon to it and just see. I mean, now it's like half extract. <laughs> Now I get the peanut. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I think if this was a sweeter mead, it would come through better. This is a dry mead, so it doesn't come through a lot, but now that's a good <clears throat> peanut butter flavor. Our peanut butter banana, what was the final? I have no idea. Does it, did I we think it was it? on the sweeter side. The PB, the peanut butter banana mead, I think that was on the sweeter side. But let's uh, yeah, finish that up. Um, do we want to do more? Yeah, let's do peanut butter in the PB banana mead. That's what this is going to be. Us basically pouring some stuff and drinking and talking about it. But now I know we have a basis for comparison and I don't need as big of a pour either. Mm, a little bit more than that. Now also, this is aged. Um, the dry, well, the dry mead is too. That's yeah. a one year. Yeah. I believe this is a little bit sweeter. Let's find out. Smells sweeter. Oh, definitely sweeter. I'm that, going to cleanse my palate. Yeah, this has a little bit of sugars in it. Still a little bit of honey flavor. Um, honey sweetness, I should say, not honey flavor. There's lots of honey <clears throat> flavor, lots of banana flavor. It's drier than my banana wine, but mm, it still has some mm -hmm. sweetness to it. So I'm going to add. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with two spoons. Yeah. Instantly my brain goes, two spoons of raisins in color space bread. It's two scoops, I know, but my brain is a scary place. I barely remember that. Completely different meat now. It actually tones down a little bit of the astringency of the banana. But that's that's what we were aiming for. Yeah, when this we were is what we were looking that. for. And now also too, something to keep in mind is that if you just throw these things in there and taste it right away, you're not getting the full effect. It needs to mellow in the brew for a while because these are alcohol-based extracts. So you want them to mellow a bit. We're just kind of <clears throat> doing a quick sample. Like I say, proof of concept. I think it could even deal with more. And be good. But I'm just, I'm trying to remember back to 9, 25, 2020, <laughs> and how much PB fit, because I think we used PB fit to, we did. to try to do, how much did we put in that initially? Quite a bit. And then we're disappointed in the results. Because PB fit Vers doesn't stay in solution. Versus how much peanut butter did we use in this extract? I know Brian keeps focusing on how much more extract. So but comparing to the fermentation versus adding extract, mm -hmm. I'm going to say you're going to use less product doing an extract. Probably, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying the exact volume that I made here is probably not enough to do a gallon. That's so good. It really does. The peanut flavor now comes through. That is the way to get peanut flavor. But it doesn't completely mask the banana. The banana is still there. So that's that. Now we need the trifecta. This okay. is chocolate. So if you guys don't know, the Brian Derica combo love desserts with the trifecta, as Brian has already mentioned. And that is peanut butter, banana, and the chocolate. Chocolate, I think, is stronger. So maybe just do um, one spoon. I need to rinse this. Or get a new spoon. So we have a peanut oh, butter yeah. spoon and a chocolate spoon. So if we get all three flavors in this beverage, it's going to be a good day. <laughs> now this one is super dark too. It looks really rich. You'll see as I pour it in. Can you move that glass out of the way so they can yeah. see? So watch as I pour this in. 
totally changes the color. It looks like coffee. Yeah. Let me stir that up a little. Now keep in mind, this is banana mead, basically, because the peanut butter didn't really come through with peanut butter extract and chocolate extract added. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. The chocolate is way stronger flavor mm. than the peanut butter. Comes through a lot more. It's like dark chocolate. It yeah. comes across as dark chocolate. Yeah. It's amazing. So that's an, good. An interesting thing, an interesting thing I took away from that is that mm. using these extracts, because they are a more concentrated flavor profile, you want to think about what is incorporated in that flavor bleh, in that flavor profile. This For needs to go in a beer. Chocolate. Chocolate is kind of a bittering agent when you use a true dark chocolate. Right. So it made this beverage a little bit bitter. So if you knew in advance that you were going to be adding a chocolate extract in there, you might want to leave that beverage a little, a little sweeter. sweeter or even back yeah. as you're adding the extracts to uh, make it be the right level for you. All right. I, I just need to do <clears throat> a peanut butter banana or peanut butter chocolate on the dry meat. I just need to do it. Oh, just the extracts. Do you want a clean glass? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's use this glass. I'm just going to make a very small amount. And then I want to add chocolate to the, the chocolate cherry one. See, when we were setting this up, I'm like, oh, we need more glasses. And Brian's like, oh, you don't want to make it that complicated. I'm like, oh, yes, we do. We really do. And now you can see Brian is agreeing. Because there's so many combinations. This is opening up so many different avenues for us. And I'm really yeah. excited about this. Yeah, this is a neat concept. There is another thing that you may or may not be taking in consideration. And that's because of how we made these extracts. So we're going to get to that in a little bit. So I did one and a half spoons of chocolate, which is going to make a very strong chocolate flavor. I'm going to do like three, three peanut butter. Because I think the chocolate is a lot stronger flavor. Yeah. Just totally overpowers the peanut butter. But this is in a more neutral dry meat. So this is a dry beverage still, but it should have... Mix? Oh, yeah. Dry beverage with chocolate and peanut butter flavors. Next is to add a little sweetener to it. That's amazingly good. You, you get it on the aroma, too, it, which yep. is, is wonderful. And I can only imagine if these were to sit and mellow for a couple of months mm. on these extracts, what it would do. Okay, we need a little bit of sweetener. One second. All right, we have some honey left from Follow the Honey. It was given to us a while ago. It's starting to crystallize a little bit, so I'll just use some of this. Just doing, like, that much. Crystallized That's honey is nothing to worry about. It... It just happens, and if you have a, a container that you can get a spoon in like we do, you just spoon it out and mix it in, and it dissolves like a normal honey. If you have it in a container that has a narrow mouth that you can't get a spoon in there, you can very gently warm it. You don't want to boil it. Like you don't put it in a pot of warm water. Just, just warm it up, and then those, those crystallized sugars will dissolve back into a normal honey liquidy state. I may or may not have just licked this one. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, this is not gonna not gonna mix in super well. The idea is just to experiment with it, play with it. Can you mix that while I yeah. put this guy back? Crystallized honey is a little harder to dissolve. Yeah, I tend to put it in my tea. It's warmer. Oh, because it's hot. Yeah. yeah. It'll get the idea. Because I think once you start adding the peanut butter and chocolate type flavors you want a little bit more sweetness in it and that was a that mead was dry it was meant to be dry so adding non-sweetened extracts makes it makes the dryness a little bit um uncomfortable to drink it was good i mean you can see the uh potential but it wasn't necessarily something i'd want to, to oh, uh drink. bad dear God. bad 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 now uh -huh. we have to wash that pretty sure those extracts um nothing's gonna grow on them once they understand what's in them. <laughs> I relinquished that glass. Oh, with wow. Much hesitation. 
That is Th incredible. That is dessert in a glass. That it is, is lovely. Totally chocolate and peanut butter with honey flavors and that little bit of the alcohol kick. It's just sweet enough without being overly sweet. Okay, so if you're like me, which I'm sorry in you're advance if you are like me, you There's only one of you, babe, like banana splits a lot, but you don't like the strawberry topping. You were going to switch that strawberry topping I out for too. a peanut butter topping. So you have the banana, you have the vanilla ice cream, you have the hot chocolate sauce, and you have the peanut butter sauce, and it is yum. And then you mix it all together and you eat it, and that goop that's at the bottom, the liquidy goop, that's what this it reminds kinda me sort of, of. Yeah. It kind of sort of, yeah. It kind of does, yeah. And it it's makes not me quite that sweet really or happy. thick, but yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. Okay, so back to the thing that I hinted on. Here, you can finish that. That Give me another glass. Brian is going to address now as he's playing mad scientist and cook. We have dirty glasses and dirty glasses. Oh, that's a dirty glass. Okay. They're both dirty. You can rinse them out if you need to, but yeah. I don't really care, right? I just don't want to put... Is how did we make these extracts, Brian? Oh, okay. It was a very scientific method. Lots of precision involved. For this one, I took PB Fit, which is actually dehydrated peanut butter, okay? We used it to make the PB peanut butter banana mead, and it failed miserably, but I was determined to make this stuff work because I love PB Fit. It's actually a great way for me to get peanut butter without the excess fat. So I just put a bunch in the bottom here. You can see there's about that much. And then I filled the rest vodka. Could you use Everclear? Of course you sure. can. And it'd probably extract a little bit better than the vodka did. We just used a plain old vodka, um, 80, 80 proof vodka. So way back in the origins of city studying, before it got split, before any of that nonsense, I made a series of videos on making like, extracts. Now I was utilizing those extracts because I was thinking about using them in cleaning products and beauty products and other non-culinary products. But the basis on how to make those is the same regardless of what your intent is. And I found that the extracting through a neutral spirit was the more efficient manner of making things. So that's what we did here. And now, oh. I saw that. <laughs> he was trying really to be good. sly, but okay, he was not. That is cherry mead. I'm he, sorry. He there's failed no, there's very on little, his bluff check there. There's very little chocolate in that. It's, it's mm. cherry mead, but it's really good cherry mead. This is the table tree juice with the best honey in the world. Mm. This is good stuff. It's also over two years aged. Oh now. boy. That is so amazingly good. I'm hesitant to even alter it. Okay, I have to done. give a shout out to some old time friends of ours. They are sponsors and they are personal friends of us. Like we are invested in their well-being and I'm not just saying that to, to yep. fluff things up. And that is the snows. Susan and Gary of Table Tree Juice, you guys are awesome and your juice is awesome. So it makes amazing meat. I know oh my God. I will completely and fairly acknowledge that it's a little bit pricey on the side of juices, but their juice but it's meant to be more so of a medicinal good. thing rather than something that you pour a big glass of and drink. Yeah. It's not really yeah. made for so if you this. find yourself where you have a little extra do re mi, right? Do a one gallon fermentation with their juice. Don't go beyond one gallon because the sticker shock might, might drive you crazy. But it is totally worth it. And then save those bottles, relish those bottles. This is two years. Special moment and you will be so happy. 25 months as a matter of fact. And whoever you long. share it with will be equally as happy. Now I just did two spoons of the chocolate into this because this was meant to be like the chocolate covered cherry cordial things. Yes. That's what it was supposed to taste yes. like in the beginning. I'll do the first taste just to make sure that it's, it's appropriate. Notice I have stopped drinking this even though I really like this because what is Derek's favorite candy? Chocolate covered cherry cordials. Thank you very much. Okay, before you taste it, it needs more. Okay, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm saving her from the... He is. This is love, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting there. And you know, this is the cool part about homebrew is as you learn things, you do things differently. We've learned so much since starting the channel and our learning has exploded exponentially because of input from you guys. Yes. So like yes. as somebody gives us an idea, we sometimes 
go with it. Sometimes we say, eh, I don't know if that's something I really want to do. And then maybe like a year later go, yeah, that is something we probably really want to do. It happens. And that's what's called science. And that's how science works. It's not that the science was wrong. It's that the science didn't know enough yet. Same with us. We just didn't know yet. And now we're learning. And I think extracts are a thing we can start adding. Wow. Did you do it? I, I think that's like dialed in perfect. This was a sweet mead to begin mm. with. It had a nice sweet flavor. Adding the dark chocolate to that lovely cherry, really, that is a chocolate covered cherry cordial. I mean, boom, spot on. I am going to give you a warning right now. If you are offended by public displays of affection, please look away. <laughs> Uh-oh. Wow. That is yummy. Yeah, this is Oh, it's good. yummy. Oh, it's totally the juice of a, a chocolate-covered cherry, where you still have the chocolate in yeah. your mouth and you get the, the little juice splurt. This is what we wanted it to be originally. Now, before anybody gets crazy on me and says, oh, you didn't really explain how to make it. That's how we made it, okay? This one was PB Fit. This one was Creo Brew, which we actually reviewed on our other channel. But Creo Brew is something you can get through Amazon, you might even be able to find it in your stores. It's a coffee alternative. What it actually is is ground cacao beans. So it's very much like PB Fit in that it's a dehydrated product from the original. There's no extra sugars. There's no extra anythings in these things. They're natural products. And, and along those lines, it's another reason why we really like PB Fit as a particular peanut butter powder is that it's really low in fat. Yeah. Now, we're drinking alcohol, so are we really concerned about health benefits here right but now? But there's no need to make it worse than it Not already so is. Much, but that. So, to help you guys out, I am going to make sure that when I do all the information in the description of this video, I'm going to have links to the peanut butter banana mead video. I'm going to have links to the cherry chocolate mead video. I'm going to have links to all the products so you can purchase them if you're interested. And I'm going to make sure they're all in there for you. So all you have to do is just hit that description button and it's all right there for you. Okay. Now, something else that I did with these, I don't know how necessary it is, is I shook them up every now and then. I haven't in at least a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were they ready two months ago? Maybe. I can't say that more time is better, but they are alcohol based. They're very, very, very unlikely to spoil. There's no fermentation. I mean, you see, we're just using plastic lids on little tiny mason jars. This is a phenomenal way to expand the flavors that you can create in your brews. My mind is racing with ideas right now as to what we can do with these things. You can do this with, with vanilla very easily oh, because yeah. that's how vanilla extract is made. You that is vanilla extract. Vanilla yeah. bean in a thing of, of a neutral spirit like vodka now, one thing to keep in mind, if you plan on carbonating and you use an extract like this, you want to be a little more careful because you're raising the ABV. If you go past the tolerance of your yeast, it won't carbonate anymore. However, Granted, it's a small amount, but you got to be careful. If you're looking to stabilize your brew... This is a step towards that. I wouldn't depend on it unless sure. you add a significant It depends amount. on the volume of yeah, the extract if you add. There's a point at which adding an extract becomes fortifying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you'd have to add a significant amount. Now, if you're using like the super high 190 or whatever it is Everclear, that point comes a little quicker. This is more like, a, I think it was a 60 or 80 proof vodka. I don't recall and I think we used it all. So yeah, it's gone. We don't have it anymore. Yeah. It was either 60 or 80 proof vodka. So it's not a super high vodka, which means I probably could use more quantity to get the same extraction rate. Higher alcohol is going to provide more extraction of the product. But overall, I would say huge success. The proof, chocolate, way better than the peanut butter. Proof of, pro, proof of concept? concept? Oh yeah, this is proof. Check. And yes, you can buy extracts in the store and they're probably much the same concept as this. I would much prefer to make my own. And that means, I mean, vanilla, chocolate, peanut butter, various fruit extracts can be made this way. Yeah. Any flavor you would want to add to your brew, you can do. I'm even thinking I could do an oak extract. Oh yeah. To instantly add tannins to a finished brew and make it taste oak aged. That's my something I want to experiment with. Blown. There's so many ways to use this and that's freaking Awesome. I I did this one day just on a spur of the moment and said, hey, let's make some extracts and see if it works. This 
this is a game changer. This, mm -hmm. this is something we're gonna be using on the channel. This chocolate one right here, throw this in my porter beer, oh. and you have the most amazing chocolate stout, like, ever. It's just perfect. And then put both of these in, and you have a peanut butter chocolate porter. Hello? All it's missing is bacon, and I know how to do that, too. <laughs> We hope that you have found watching this video is fun and exciting as we have in, in tr experimenting and trying these beverages. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>